Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV. Welcome to our end of year show as we are coming to you outdoors of Studio B here. And as you can see, Christmas is just around the corner. We've got all the lovely little decorations and then the banner uh, in the background there. I'm Ron Riggs. Alongside me is none other than Justin Bryan. Justin, welcome. How are you, Ronald? It's uh, good to finally catch up after a couple of months off uh, and heading into what is going to be a peak season this off-season. Oh, absolutely. All the off-season news is, is going off like no tomorrow. Now, we should add the third member of our crew, Trent Arnold, is is not with us. He's on assignment, JB. Yeah, um, travelling internationally we do believe covering some NBA so uh, look for some updates there of what Trent's been doing and his whereabouts Absolutely, Chargers TV going global ladies and gentlemen and let's kick off with the Chargers and all the off-season news that has been happening uh, Kalau Wisher is coming back to the club after a stint in WA and it's great to have the 2014 uh, Southern Conference Championship winner uh, coming back to us. Absolutely, and Clara's been very busy in the time that she's been away from the club. Um, as you see with the graphic on the screen there, um, those numbers from her team MVP um, in the WSBL. So putting up some good production and some positive signs for her heading back into the club for season 2018. Absolutely, and Clara should be here sometime in the new year or just before the season started. Also re-signing with the club is none other than the stalwart, coming back for a sixth season, is the reigning Seabull Women's Defensive Player of the Year in Kathleen Shearer. Well, she's becoming not just a stalwart of the club, but she's becoming almost a legend of Tasmanian basketball, um, men and women. Um, I believe this is going to be her sixth or seventh season uh, with the team, I mean, as we mentioned, the reigning Defensive Player of the Year for the Seabull, putting up numbers comparable to any player in either competition, um, men's and women's, and as you mentioned, you know, the DPOY, um, she's a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. It's great to have Kathleen back with us for another season. Now, in in other news, I suppose Dwayne has made those two announcements, uh, but Dwayne has clearly ruled out that Michaela Roof will not be coming back to the club next season. Uh, obviously, a mid-season inclusion during the year. Michaela brought in for a lot of versatile reasons. Defensively, she was one of them, and her rebounding was another, and she more than provided that. Uh, as far as rebounds per game, she actually led the league in the time that she was playing in the 2017 season, also provided some scoring um, and general vibes and atmosphere around the team. So that's a pretty big loss uh, for the women's team, uh, if you ask me there, Ronald. Absolutely. Let's jump into the men because Coach Anthony Stewart has made um, some announcements already. He's also, he's announced that Mafang Muo is coming back next season. Uh, as Anthony says, he feels that Mathang can be the face of the program for the next three years, and it's not hard to see why. Um, the kids love him. Uh, he's a scoring machine. He did win the scoring title in the Seabull last year, over 22 points a game. And as you can see there, five games of 30 points or more, he's able to go off and really put the team on his back offensively when he needs to. So a great inclusion for the Chargers for 2018. And also a newcomer to the team next year will be Trey Nichols. Now, Trey Nichols had been playing in WA and is also currently playing in Saudi Arabia. And we know Trent is pretty active on his social media and we'll probably see this, cl uh, see this show so, Trey if, uh, Trey, if you're watching, hello to you. Yeah, um, I mean, dominant. You've only got to look at the numbers there. Pretty sure he was the WASBL uh, MVP in general for the men's league, not just his team, but for the league. Um, he poured in those huge 30-point games over there. There is numbers for the SBL competition in WA. Capable scorer. Um, as Anthony mentioned, a point guard, small, um, able to score and distribute the ball. Certainly a key inclusion to the side. Absolutely. And if you see his highlight reel, it is unbelievable to watch and no doubt will light up the Doing Entertainment Centre next season. The departures um, um, that are leaving the men are... Uh, Rob Hayer not returning. Uh, Rob not returning, but uh, a shout out to Rob. Rob played really well for the team last year. I mean, as you can see there, 16, 7 and 2 on 51% shooting and over 40% from the, the three-point line. Actually playing in the G League for the South Bay Lakers, the associate team of the Los Angeles Lakers, I do believe. So upwards and onwards for Rob and, yeah, good luck. Absolutely. And you can see some of the G League's uh, games live on, through Facebook Live. Just look up the G League there. Uh, next one we're going to talk about, this is probably the, the biggest departure, and I know we have a senior intern within our crew here who is not happy about that, but we, we'll, we'll press on, though, with, with that. With that. Uh, Lewis Thomas has departed to Mount Gambier. Um, 
arguably our biggest, our second biggest loss, you know, along with Rob there. Rob was providing probably just a, a slight bit more in the scoring department there. But as far as um, contributing to another side in the league and going up against us, he's certainly our biggest loss. I mean, obviously signed with Mount Gambia. We are going to get into that. I mean, Lewis was great with families, great mm. with the kids. Um, and, I mean, as you'll see at the end of the show, he certainly dominated the highlights for season 2017. Absolutely. The Lewis Thomas dunk fest, as I'd like to call it. Um, but we wish Lewis all the very best in his new adventure in Mount Gambia. Uh, Chris Whitehead not returning uh, as, as well um, next season. Anthony Stewart uh, decided to go in a different direction. Absolutely. And, I mean, a shout-out to Chris, another one who the kids loved and adored. Um, probably helped that Chris was, you know, sort of more relatable and on their level so to speak, height-wise, he was a little smaller um, compared to the other players. But, I mean, action-packed. I mean, as you mentioned in that interview with Anthony, in his last eight games, he was arguably the most important player uh, to the team. Good numbers there, improved his shooting. Um, All-around great guy. Again, can't fault Chris and hope he does well for his future. Uh, a couple of locals also departing due to work commitments and other things as well too in Fraser Garrick and Dwayne Radcliffe leaving the club. Uh, two stalwarts um, of Hobart basketball in general. I mean, you've got Dwayne there. Um, you know, a big guy who's able to come off and provide minutes. Same with Fraser. Um, Fraser and Brian have both moved into state uh, for work and other um, interests. Uh, so best of luck to them. And, yeah, hopefully their basketball can continue to develop um, and they can contribute some way um, in their future. Also, Tom Garlop not returning either. The fly-in, fly-out rule didn't really go to plan. Uh, unfortunately not. And, again, another big loss. Tom was all Siebel second team. I mean, you can only see the valuable experience he can bring. I mean, he's notched up, what, 150-plus NBL games at the moment, um, 19 points in the Seabull, over 45% shooting. I mean, he only really played half a season, so potential all Seabull first-team player there gone. Um, that's a big loss for the club. Uh, and absolutely, and Tom currently playing with the Sydney Kings at the moment in the an International Basketball League. So Coach Anthony Stewart still has one more signing to, to make and he's looking for a big guy that can rebound and, and kind of score. And um, we're not sure if we're going to get an announcement um, before Christmas. It could be well after Christmas. But what do you think Anthony is looking for? Um, again, as you mentioned, that big guy, and one thing that he did mention in that um, interview you did with Anthony, uh, they've got a really young bench and I think he's looking for a fair bit of experience, a bit of depth. But along with that height, you've lost Dwayne and you've lost Fraser, you're looking for those rebounds, you're looking for that defensive, you're looking for a bit of grit. Um, and that's just something that even though the young guys are wanting to give it and really try their best, they're probably just not developed enough in the Seawall competition to do it. So again, a big guy who's able to grab rebounds, who's able to play a bit of defense. I mean, the scoring that we've lost there through some of our big guys like Tom um, and a Rob are certainly going to need to be improved upon as well. But I do feel that defense and rebound is certainly what he's looking for in a big man. Uh, abso absolutely, JB. And, well, that covers all the off-season news for the Hobart Chargers. And we'll take a look at the rest of the league right after this.